Friends, enemies, and internet losers, I have returned. Hello, Baroness Cameron here, the aging rock star, and welcome to the aging rock star review. Okay, I got a lot of stuff to take care of today, so I'm going to have to move quickly. You know how I love to gab, so I'm just going to stop talking right now. Well, no, I'm not, but hey. Anyway. Okay, so, uh, interesting week. I'm going to have to split this into two reviews, so I'm going to deal with actually catching up from last week. Um... On Saturday, last Saturday, I was at the Railway Club to see the Cadaver Dogs with their uh, their CD release party. Um, and opening up for them, <coughs> excuse me, were Starlings, uh, The New Black, and Swank. And I owe Swank a review. It's kind of a long story, but we'll get to it. So, Starlings, start with them. Um, they were a duo, two guitars. Uh, in my notes right here, it says, nothing that isn't needed, but not in a retarded, minimalist way. <laughs> so they were they were stripped down, but they're really good, actually. Um, <clears throat> a lot of sort of, just sort of straightforward guitar work, but also they had some distorted tunes in there that worked really, really well. Uh, they did a, a great cover of uh, That's What You Get For Loving Me. Um, I think I'm probably most familiar with the Peter, Paul, and Mary version. They did it. It was much like that one, except, of course, that it had a bit more of a country twang to it, which really actually suited the song. I thought that was great. Um, there were some tiny but endearing mistakes, and the thing that was endearing about them is there was no, absolutely no pretension on stage with these two. I mean, they were a joy to watch. Um, at one point, they even said, thanks for being so nice to us. And it, was, it was very hard not to be nice to them. Um, it kind of reminded me of the of the breeders playing sort of country folk rock but without that whole I used to be in the Pixies and now I'm not bullshit kind of hanging over them anyway that was Starlings um, no they were really very good so I got a little clip of their stuff here um, and uh, well roll it was uh, Starlings. quite like them. Uh, after Starling was a band called uh, The New Black, and I have to kind of apologize to The New Black because I was outside on the deck talking to a journalist about South by Southwest Music Festival pretty much for the duration of their set. I came in to catch the uh, the last 45 seconds or so. I mean, it, it sounded fantastic from outside. and it was uh, Anyway, oops. Uh, after the new black were Swank. Now, I said that I owe Swank a review, and how this works is uh, they played the uh, Town Pants 10-year anniversary show at the Commodore. And uh, a lot of that night was spent in sort of a beer-induced coma. And when I went to check my notes the next day when I was writing the review, all it said was Swank are good, really good. And you know what? They are. Uh, they're a fun outfit. And it was actually nice to sit down and watch them play and, and remember them playing. Um, so here's a little clip of Swank. As I said, it was a great show. Really enjoyed seeing them. Really enjoyed remembering them, too. This is Swank. was Swank. Hope you guys like that. Uh, this is the uh, Cadaver Dogs CD, uh, Pariah Social, which is a great name for a CD. Uh, it's good. Very fun stuff. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, Touch Me Behind the Liquor Store, track number four, Beer Flavored Beer, number six, and Hung Over in Church Again, uh, Lord Protect Your Fuel, Lord Protect Your Fuel, oh, fuck off, Lord Protect Your Fools, myself included. Uh, no, it's a, it's a fantastic scene. Now, their live show is hilarious, because you get these group of guys on stage, um, and like they're not the type of guys that would kick your ass, and they probably wouldn't let it happen to you if... You know, they could stop it, but they're definitely the type of guys who would buy you a beer the next night and bug the hell out of you about getting your butt kicked. Um, got two SGs up front, which is nice, because, you know, you take a Rickenbacker on vacation, you take an SG to war. Um, you know, there's enough country in there to call it country, but it's more just sort of, uh, you know, sort of having some some fun. 
um, a little bit of that, that playful Duke boys and thing in there. I mean, they're not the type of guys that would necessarily run moonshine, but you know that they would definitely run interference for the revenuers. Good guys. And their, their songs, as I said, they're, they're really well put together. And it's sort of the idea that, you know, everyone has a friend who, you know, always starts a sentence with, man, I had a shitty day, but he's smiling when he says it. And that's kind of what the, you know, the Cadaver Dog's music is like, because it's, um, it's good, funny stuff. I mean, it's... Go see them play. I mean, they, they strike me as the type of guys that probably play very late into the night because when all of them are together, probably you wouldn't want to be the first one to fall asleep because, you know, you'd, you'd wake up missing an eyebrow with something rather obscene written on your forehead and chivy marker. But it was a great show. Um, I, was, uh, I, was, I was very impressed. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the CD case right now is uh, empty because it's currently in my CD player. So that is Cadaver Dogs. We're going to play a little bit of a clip for you here. Now, uh, apologies with this clip. Um, my camera is slowly but surely dying. <sighs> so what I had to do was I took the live clip and the sound was just crap on it. So I basically uh, took one of the tracks from their album, synced it up to the live clip that I had, and so you can sort of see what they sound, sort of see what they look like live and sound like with the album. And never mind, you'll get it. Anyway, this is Cadaver Dog. <laughs> Was Cadaver Dogs fun, fun stuff, good band, great guys too, good guys to meet. Um, yeah, so that is it for me, for this episode at least. Uh, just a quick reminder that Thursday, April 24th, you have a big ska-a-thon going on at the plaza. Um, with the highballs are going to be headlining that, and I'm going to be dropping down on that one. On Friday, the 25th, at Pub 304, which is, I guess, is it 304 or 340? Fuck, I can't remember. But it'll be proper down here somewhere. Um, Raised by Apes are having their record release, and that is uh, Friday, April 25th. Saturday, the 26th, I'm actually going to try and make it out to the Pink Flamingo Burlesque Show at the Biltmore. And uh, I got an invite to that from Red, who is now fronting... Well, has always been a part of The Hermit, but is now fronting The Hermit, uh, as well as some of her own projects. So I'm going to go down and check that out. So if you are playing, let me know. I will let them know. And if there's anything on the web that I should be checking out, pass it along, and I will check it out. Till we meet again, my name is Baron S. Cameron, the aging rock star, and... <laughs>